So, um, what are some gospel examples that you guys can think of where Jesus follows his deeds with words, where, or where people come to him first? That's a question. Uh, where it says, someone, was it Paul from the IU of the King of the Jews? Mm-hmm. And he says, I am what you say I am. Yeah. Okay. And why do you think Pilate asked that? Huh? Why do you think Pilate asked that question? Possibly because he really knew. He wanted Jesus to. We can only only guess, but something caused him to realize that at least Jesus is living in such a way that he thinks he is the king of the Jews, or people are saying that he's the king of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Any other stories from the Gospels you can think of where Jesus doesn't initiate his rich young ruler? Okay. So the rich young ruler, yeah. So we see Jesus and some of these followers who have left everything, and he comes to him. Realizing this guy's got some wisdom and he has a question. The, the, the woman who touched his garment, she like went up to him and knew that he healed, so she, yeah. I think this is where we've seen the most fruit in our team. Reminds me a little bit of, you guys know what Aaron and Shree have been doing with the, like with Roz and others. I, I'm assuming a lot of you guys are helping. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me do something, from what I've gathered, what you guys are doing, pretty similar that we call prehab with people where someone's trying to get into rehab. You know, it's just so hard. Like 82% of our neighbors live alone. I don't know if you know that. 82%. And so when you're still surrounded by drugs or you're alone, the devil, like just like a lion, tries to get one animal away from the flock, you know, like, when you're alone, the devil just hits hard. And so he's, after seeing too many of our friends on the streets, like, wanting to get drugs, but during the more time, they're waiting to get into, like, UGM or some other place for rehab, falling back into their addictions. He said, enough is enough, and so he began to say, come stay with us, and we'll have someone with you 24-7, and uh, sleep as much as you want, eat any of the food in our fridge, um, you're welcome to join us for dinner, morning prayer rhythms that you done, we've had our combined prayers, um, you know, you're welcome to live life with us, don't feel pressured to do anything, you don't have to come and pray with us, um, and during that time, so many people we've seen just transformed, and they start asking questions, it's, it's almost like us trying to keep up with answering their questions, they become curious and fascinated, and we've seen a, a good handful of people either accept Christ or recommit their lives to following Jesus, um, it's the most fruitful evangelism I've ever seen. We're trying to brag about Jesus and all we do, um, but above all, we create a space in which people can hopefully, I mean, we stumble and mess it up a lot, but we try to live out kingdom values, we try to live out God's love, um, people become curious. So the third thing that Patrick can teach us is that we need to switch the order and allow belonging Ministry, conversation. 
conversation. And last is belief or an invitation to discipleship. So that's what I see in our prehabs, for example. People typically join us for dinners first. Um, they've been, we've gone to know them either maybe from the drop-ins that they hang out at or in the garden. We've built friendships with them. And as they want to get off of drugs, we welcome them into our community. So we're even just deepening that fellowship with them. And then almost inevitably, in fact, no one has ever said, I don't want to be a part of these things. People start to come and join us for our prayer times. So we don't force it on them. But they, they say, please, I, I want to. Or, um, I've had a lot of questions about this in the scriptures. So this kind of ministry, they join us in our Creator World Justice Nights. Um, they'll sometimes come with us to the garden, so we're involved. And there's a lot of talking, there's a lot of conversation that's going on while we're doing ministry, before they're even believing. And slowly, it just there's this transformation that happens in them. As you have these conversations, they know they're accepted, whether they believe or not. They experience ministry conversation, and so many have come to believe. And discipleship is happening. It is. These three lessons are here. Make disciples, not just converts. Jason, do you have any uh, illustrations of that happening in St. Patrick, like stories? Mm. Well, th it was his whole model. So he would take, he started out with 12 and himself, and they'd form a little community on the settlement, or tribal settlement, okay? And they'd just welcome people in. So the stories are they'd have meals with them, they'd care for the sick, they'd welcome them in that way. So it was a lot of ministry of hospitality. Um, when there was conflicts, they did conflict resolutions. Uh, I'll talk about it in just a second with the fourth point, but Patrick was actually the first person recorded in history to speak out universally against slavery. And because of Patrick, slavery was abolished in Ireland. So again, like he's working, he's living out kingdom values of justice, um, not just concerned about the numbers of how many churches he plants. So he's living out this countercultural life on the side of settlements, and he's saying that's an injustice, the slavery there. I mean, he was a slave himself, he knows this firsthand. And so they're living counterculturally, people are curious, they're coming, they're asking, they're fellowshipping together. Um, yeah, so a great book, if you want to read more on it, is one called The Celtic Way of Evangelism. And it goes, it dives further into this, the Celtic way of evangelism by George Hunter, I think is the author. George who? Hunter. Yeah. So, here's my question for you guys. Thinking of 614, our, our neighborhood that we live in, what does it mean that, <coughs> for your own life, for your own ministry, that the faith is three quarters caught? One quarter taught. Our faith is three quarters caught. And one quarter taught. What do you think that means for your life and six one four ministry? separate from that. I think that was something that we lived out that was never 